Uh, well, thank you, Tim. Good morning, everyone. Um, we appreciate you showing up on such short notice. It's uh, nice to see everybody. Um, we're here this morning to talk about the future leadership of the Edmonton Oilers and what we're doing and what our plans are to give our fans the team they deserve this season and in the years to come. As you will have heard, no doubt, and read, the first step in that program is the hiring of Ken Holland as the new president of hockey operations and general manager of the Edmonton Oilers. As you know, um, this was a decision I entrusted to Bob Nicholson. My charge to him was to find the right person to oversee hockey operations from top to bottom and someone he could work with. I want to thank Bob for putting his heart and soul into this effort. I know the time it took and I know the time you spent, Bob, and I have every confidence in the process that he ran and I'm very excited about the decision. Bob will have more to say about Ken in a minute, but let me just say that when it comes to hiring someone with the experience, credibility, and authority to make an immediate impact, which is what we need, nobody else comes close. Um, more than that, we didn't hire Ken just because of what he has done in the past. We hired him for what he can do for the Oilers right now and in the years ahead. Um, above all, Ken uh, is, commands a respect from players, scouts, other executives throughout the hockey world, not only throughout the hockey world, throughout the entire sports world. Um, and he knows how to build a culture of winning. Now, there are a lot of bright minds in hockey, young bright minds in hockey today. You know, I know Bob talked to many of them during our search. But at the end of the day, it became abundantly clear that Ken was by far the right candidate for the job. And having gotten Ken Holland, yes, you can be sure he will have full autonomy as general manager. You can ask him, um, but I don't think he would be here if that wasn't the case. I want to say just a few more things before I turn it over to Bob and Ken. One, we have not delivered on the promise we made to our fans in recent years. You know it and I know it, and we all know it. And while accountability, accountability for this falls on everyone in our organization, it starts and it stops with me. And I want you to know we're listening to our fans, we get it, and we're doing everything we can to get it right. Secondly, Ken will report to Bob, and as I said, have full autonomy on all hockey matters and personnel. But the two of them will work collaboratively, and Bob will keep me in the loop and up to speed relative to what they're doing, as he has in the past. Finally, um, I believe in this team, and I believe in this city. That's why I'm especially proud to be the owner of the Oilers and why we built this incredible new arena. That's why we're building one of the greatest developments in the world, Ice District. And that's why Bob, when Bob came to me and said Ken was our guy, I did everything necessary and that I could to bring him here. I know our fans don't want plans or promises, they want results, and so do we. 
All I'm saying is that with our core players, our prospects, Bob's leadership, and now Ken as president of hockey operations and general manager, we're on track. And we couldn't all be more excited about the future. And with that, I will turn it over to Bob. Thank you very much, uh, Daryl. And uh, first of all, thanks for your support to, uh, through this process. Uh, it certainly was a long process, a deep process. But Kenny, I look up here, uh, it makes me pretty excited. Uh, Ken Holland, Oilers behind. Uh, you know, you've been a Red Wing for so long and they've done such a great job. I've known you for so long that I'm so excited. Uh, I know the whole organization is uh, so excited to, uh, to have you lead our hockey operations. I look back uh, to February when I started this uh, approach to look for a general manager. And I said a general manager. Uh, you're hearing today that he is a president and general manager because of what he's done in the past and what he'll do in the future. His resume stands by itself. But I just want to spend a moment um, saying that uh, I interviewed a lot of people, uh, a lot of very good people through the process. Through the process, I saw that uh, Ken Holland was turning the reins over to Steve Eiserman, and I watched that very closely. Um, because of the relationship I had with Steve, the relationship with Ken, uh, and then just in the last few days, did we get down to have some very serious talks about Ken being here. And it went very quickly because of our long relationship. Uh, and I'd already narrowed down the process. And I do want to recognize one other person in this process. And that's Keith Gretzky. Keith Gretzky did a great job as the interim general manager. Uh, Keith Gretzky went, was through the whole process but I had to make a recommendation to Daryl Cates, who was going to be the president and general manager, and there is only one person that I recommended to Daryl, and that was Ken Holland. Uh, Ken, I know that uh, you've got a lot of work to do in front of you, uh, but when you look at a resume as a general manager uh, in the National Hockey League, uh, this is the type of person that we want to lead this organization. Daryl's already said this already, and we've had uh, a lot of good discussion on it. Uh, you know, Ken will lead hockey operations from top to bottom. I will work with Ken to make sure that he has all those avenues open for him to do whatever it takes to make the Edmonton Oilers successful. I have a great relationship with Daryl. We're starting that relationship uh, with Ken. We had a great night last, last night. Uh, we're going to continue to do that so that the three of us work together to make sure that we go forward in a very positive way. First of all, for our players, our staff, and our fans. Uh, we know that there's frustration with the fans, but I can tell you today with naming Ken Holland as a general manager and president of hockey operations, this is a perfect step for us to move forward in a positive way. So Ken, uh, great to have you on the team. Thank you. Um, first off, it's an incredibly exciting day for me and my, uh, my family. Um, I'm a Western Canadian boy. Uh, I was born in Vernon, British Columbia. I played junior hockey in Medicine Hat, Alberta in the mid 70s. And then after I played nine years of pro, I started scouting for the Red Wings and spent 10 years living in Medicine Hat from 1985 to 1994. So love the prairies uh, and obviously very, very familiar with the, um, the history of the Edmonton Oilers. Before I go into that a little bit, I do want to thank a couple of people. Um, it's been an emotional time for me the last couple of weeks. I've been with the Detroit Red Wings for 30, 36 years. Um, the last 22 as the general manager of the Detroit Red Wings. And uh, uh, I'd say when, as the process went along for me, 
that I knew that Steve Eisman was going to be, uh, to be taking over. Um, the owners in Detroit gave me an unbelievable offer to remain with the Red Wings uh, in a senior vice president um, role. And I went over to the World uh, Under-18 Championships um, with Steve, with Chris Draper, with the Red Wings staff. And as I was over there, um, I realized that I had the passion, the energy, um, the enthusiasm, the desire to continue to be a general manager in the National Hockey League. And when I got back, um, Bob reached out to me and we spent uh, a lot of time on the phone over the last few days and ultimately came to the decision to, to be here today. Um, I'd like to thank Daryl and Renee Cates for believing in me and entrusting me to be the general manager of the Edmonton Oilers and to lead this team. Um, and my goal, obviously, is to lead this team to become an elite team in the National Hockey League. And I think that there's lots of um, key pieces here that are in place. Um, again, being a manager for 22 years, I don't care where your team is in the standings, there's always work that needs to be done. Whether you're high up in the standings, there's the salary cap that's going to affect you and you've got to figure out how to stay up there. And when you're building, you've got to try to figure out how to uh, move your way up the ladder. But there's lots of great pieces in place here. Um, certainly as I analyzed, as Bob and I talked um, about um, coming to Edmonton, certainly the players, um, I know that Daryl is inc incredibly motivated um, as an owner to, to have a, a great team. And Daryl had talked about, the, he's got the, the most beautiful building in the world here. Um, the ice district across the street, so certainly Daryl is committed to, uh, to this team uh, and to this city. So uh, all those were, were factors, major factors in me making a decision to, uh, to leave Detroit and come to, uh, come to Edmonton. So today is an incredibly exciting day for me. Another person I do want to also uh, recognize back in Detroit is Jim DeVolano, um, who was my uh, role model and mentor. When I got into the business in 1985, he was the general manager of the Red Wings. He moved me up the ranks from uh, Western Scout to uh, Chief Scout to uh, uh, Assistant General Manager, and he recommended to Mr. and Mrs. Silich in 1997 that they hire me as the general manager of the, uh, the Detroit Red Wings. And then I'd like to also thank the Illich family um, for their support through the years in, uh, in allowing me to fulfill my dream and be an NHL general manager, and we went on and won some Stanley Cups. So, uh, Certainly, uh, it's an exciting, exciting day for me. Uh, my family, we, I have a daughter that lives in Calgary. My wife has a sister and a brother that live in Calgary. We have, Cindy has three, three daughters, three sisters that live in Medicine Hat. My wife's, uh, Cindy's dad lives in Medicine Hat. So, uh, prairies are home for us. Um, we're excited to be here in Edmonton. I'm, I'm excited to work with Bob. I enjoyed uh, the process with Bob. Bob and I go back. Bob's from Penticton, BC. I'm from Vernon. Um, in 2005, I think we were at the. Uh, I was the assistant manager with uh, Hockey Canada World World Entry. Uh, 2006, Bob made me the general manager of the of the team uh, in Latvia. I was involved with the the Olympic team in 2010, the Olympic team in 2014. So I've got a tremendous relationship with Bob, his wife Lauren, and my wife Cindy. Uh, hit it off um, at all the tournaments. So as I went through the whole process, the relationship with Bob, the commitment of Daryl. Um, to this team, the history of this team. You're looking at uh, some great young players on this team. Um, it was a, a, a natural fit for me to make a decision to, uh, to move to Edmonton, become the general manager and president of the Edmonton Oilers. And I'm very, very excited. We have a lot of work to do. Um, but the, again, the goal is to uh, build this team into an elite team, be in the playoffs. And one day, one day, Hoist the Stanley Cup over your head. Lots of, lots of things need to happen. Lots of building blocks. Lots of work have to be done. Just a couple of things, and you guys are going to ask me a lot of questions. I, I talked to Ken Hitchcock last night. I told Ken that he would not be the coach of the, of the Edmonton Oilers in, in 1920. I did talk to his, uh, his assistants today to inform them that I had told Ken I'm going to start a process here immediately. That would be my number one priority, obviously, in the next uh, few weeks to find the next head coach of the Edmonton Oilers. Um, at the same time, what I want to do is talk to as many people as I can, talk to Bob. I talked to Ken Hitchcock last night. I've talked to the coaches. I'm trying to gather information 
as I go about the process of making decisions, um, what to do with staff, and also, uh, as, as we lead, you know, this is the time of the, of the year in the National Hockey League. You, you know, you make your, your moves from probably the 20th of June to uh, early July through uh, whatever trades you can make at the draft. Obviously the draft, you know, July 1st free agency. So this is the period of time when, you, uh, when you're doing your planning Next week, uh, we're going to have uh, amateur meetings, pro meetings. I look forward to meeting all those people, and I will make some decisions. Um, I do expect to have some change. Uh, I'm not going to give you a time frame on change, but I do expect to have some change, and um, I look forward to uh, working with all you uh, going forward. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Uh, we're going to jump uh, into the Q&A now. Um, let's go up front here, Ryan. Ken, uh, Ryan Rashad with TSN. Uh, maybe just right to the on-ice product, your thoughts on the biggest needs this team has and what a realistic timeline is for playoff hockey. Well, I would say to you, I, you know, my, my hope is, Ryan, my hope is that um, I can come in and provide stability, um, select a coach that's going to have a real impact um, on this team. And I'd like to think we're talking playoffs in 1920. When you look at the, uh, you know, some of the young players on this team, um, I know they missed the playoffs by, by 10 points, but they got, I think he got off to a tough start. And then, unfortunately, over the course of the season, Bob had to let the, uh, Peter let the coach go, and then Bob let the manager go. And I think those are, those are distractions for the, for the players. So I'm hoping that the stability that I can provide um, will allow the players to play. And I'm, I'm, my thought is that we're going to compete for a playoff spot in 1920. At the same time, we want to build, we want to grow. It's more than just about making the playoffs. It's about trying to make the playoffs year after year after year um, and, then, and then go on some playoff runs. And that's where you need, obviously, building blocks. Um, I've got my thoughts on, uh, on the team. Certainly, there's a, there's a great core. I have to build around that core. Um, and... We're going to go down to uh, uh, Bakersfield, uh, San Diego uh, uh, playoff tomorrow night, game three and game four tomorrow and, and, and Friday, Saturday hopefully. And I want, I'd like to look at uh, some of the players down there. Um, I've seen Bouchard play junior. I, I've seen Sam Rukov play junior. Those are two players that I, I was at the World Junior and, you know, uh, I, I was out scouting this year for the Red Wings. So uh, I've seen some of the young players that the Oilers have in their system and there's some, there's some good young players. Uh, I believe in... Um, Player development, I believe, in time in the, in the minors. Um, and, um, you know, I, there, Mike Babcock used to say, Ken Holland would say, overripe. You know, I believe that uh, uh, the National Hockey League is the toughest league in the world. And if you put young players in the league too quick, um, more likely that they're going to fail than, than, than succeed. So uh, we've got to find some, uh, I think we got a core up front, got to figure out how to surround them. Um, properly and then uh, look at the defense certainly you got uh, you got a goaltender got to probably have to get another goaltender um, and again a, a priority one is to find a coach up front here yep. and Mark Spector from Sportsnet yep. uh, this organization has missed the playoffs 12 out of 13 years you presided over one of the best winning cultures in the modern era in the NHL how do you change the culture macro and how do you change it in the dressing room Actually, Bob and I had a lot of talk, and 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 with Daryl last night. I guess I would say to you, Mark, my management style in Detroit was was stability, and we had um, you know, when I joined the Red Wings in 1983. The Illiches have owned the team since 1983. Daryl's been here for 11 years, and spending time with Daryl, Daryl's got passion. Um, so I, my job is to provide stability. I don't believe I. Um, my job is to find the right people, believe in them on the ice and off the ice, support them, um, the young players, put them in the American League, let them grow into NHL players, come into the NHL. I understand I'm coming here and they've made the playoffs once out of 13 years. This is a passionate, passionate fan base. And I, was, I, I had my notes here, which I forgot. I remember in 2006, when the Oilers beat us out in the first round of the playoffs, we had, I think, about 128 points. and coming into Edmonton for games uh, three, four, and six um, was absolutely crazy. The, uh, the emotion in the building, and I thought that the, 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 the Oiler fans had, a, had an impact on, on the Oilers knocking us out of the playoffs in 2006. So certainly I know if we can get it going, we get it going, 
the fans are going to they're going to rally behind us and they're going to push our players and our team and our organization to greater heights so how do i get it going we get it going by stability i gotta have a plan i've got to meet uh i got to gather information and then start to make moves on and off the ice that i believe are going to impact the team in a positive way uh, i don't have a magic wand uh, i don't believe there's one trade and all of a sudden things turn it's a, it's, a, it's, it's a move at a time. It's a move at a time. It's a piece at a time. It's going down in the locker room. It's providing stability. It's knowing that we've got a plan and we're going to push, push forward with the plan. And the plan is, I like the team. We've got to compete. I like to play with speed. Um, obviously, you want to get as much skill as you can. You know, the Red Wings, I was there for 22 years. 19 years, we made the playoffs in a row. And maybe maybe one there was work stoppage, but but the last three we were um, obviously we went, we went in a rebuild, and as 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 our team went through that run, of uh, we won the cups in '97, '98, '08, and and then and '02 and '08, uh, we were getting into rebuild mode, and I'm 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 proud of that. I think as I look at the Detroit Red Wings today, again they've got a lot of work to do, but there's some pieces in place, and there's some draft picks, and I think the same thing here when I come to Edmonton, you got to have a plan. And you got to stick to the plan, and the plan is to build. For the most part, you got to build through the draft, but we got to go outside the organization and bring in pieces that we think are going to help. Some are maybe going to be expensive pieces. Some are going to be the cheaper players that that are really good fits for a short time. Um, the key building blocks are here. The key building blocks are here, um, and and in the organization, we got to add to them. Um, but I think, again, I think that there's, I think this, this team, this organization is ready. They're waiting for us. They're waiting for this team to, to start to, to win and make the playoffs and the, and the place will go crazy. I, I saw it in 2008. So that's my job. That's my job. And in talking to Bob and Daryl, they've given me full, of, full authority. That's certainly one of the, you know, I've been in Detroit for so long and had, had, had an incredible relationship with the ownership there. So, and, and, and then we went into a, work st uh, a salary cap world in 2005. And I'm proud that we were the last team to miss the playoffs in a salary cap world. Everybody in the, in the league missed the playoffs in the salary cap world. We, we were the last team. And we had to go from a uh, $80 million payroll in 2005 down to a $39 million payroll. We were able to find some pieces, Dan Cleary and Andreas Lilly and this guy and that guy, and piece it together. But we had the core. We had the young Zetterberg and Datsuk, and I was able to work around the core. That core is here. So I've got a core to work with. Now I've got to go out and support that core, find a coach, and provide stability, and build a program here that our fan base um, is excited about. Let's go to uh, Terry, and then Jim, and then uh, Terry back. Jones, Edmonton Sun and Journal. Ken, uh, can you, uh, let's carry on with the salary cap there. Can you speak to the situation that, uh, you're picking, uh, taking over with with the salary cap in Edmonton, but also the uh, the situation you left in Detroit and uh, and the complications that you got involved in there. And if you could to touch on uh, the future of Keith Gretzky. Uh, it's a lot of questions. Number one is the salary cap here. Um, I've gone over it. Um, I would say to you, Terry. Most teams have salary cap issues. That's the reality of being a general manager in the National Hockey League in 2019. If you don't have issues, you're probably a team that's 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 on the rebuild. So um, most most teams have have uh, have speed bumps or however you want to look at them that you have to you have to you have to work around. Um, the salary cap in Detroit. Oh, they've got $20 million of salary cap space as you and I speak today leading into July 1st. Next year, I think $15 million, 12 to $15 million come off. So Detroit's got a ton of cap space. Um, you know, I would, and I would say to you, Terry, over 20, I've been a manager for 22 years. I'm going to make some bad decisions. Like if you think you're going to make decisions over 22 years and you're never going to make a bad decision, I'd like to meet that guy because I don't think it, it exists. You got to make more good decisions than bad decisions, and I think I made way more good decisions in Detroit than bad decisions. But I did make some decisions that didn't work out the way that I thought. But you make those decisions based upon the information at hand. You talk to your people. I'm a general manager that likes to bring my my people into the mix. I don't make the, the, the decision all on my own. I talk to my people, I gather information, and I make a decision. And if the decision doesn't work out the way we wanted to, I got to work around that decision. Uh, so, um, what's, the, what's the other question? 
Keith. I have not talked to Keith. Um, obviously, uh, I got a tremendous amount of respect for Keith. I do, I, do, I do want to talk to Keith. I would like to keep Keith in the organization, um, but I have not spoken to him, but certainly he is, is on my list to talk to uh, very soon. Thanks, Terry. Jim? Uh, Jim Matheson, Pulse Media. Welcome, Ken. Uh, a couple of questions. One, uh, is it easier as a general manager to come in when you've got Dreisaitl and McDavid and you don't have to find s star players? You can build down the lineup as opposed. And the other question is, uh, why not Ken Hitchcock as coach? Yeah, good. Um, absolutely. I mean, obviously, they're Jim, they're two young superstars. I mean, I, I, I don't know, they're 21 and 22 or 22 and 23. Connor is, uh, you know, maybe the greatest young player in the game um, with what everything he's accomplished. And uh, I think his better days are ahead of him still. He's not even in his prime yet. Um, Leon had uh, 50 goals and um, a great second half. Um, so obviously two massive building blocks, two massive building blocks. And uh, um, why not Ken Hitchcock? I just think coming in here, um, this is an opportunity for me to make change. And um, I talked to Ken last night. Certainly I'm going to talk to Ken. I've known Ken for a long, long time, back to the, the early 90s when I was the chief scout of the, of the Detroit Red Wings and he was coaching Kamloops. I used to go talk to him about his players. Um, so I've got a relationship going back 25, 30 years with, with, with Ken. I just think it was time to, uh, time to make change and an opportunity for me to go through a process and hire a coach. Um, you know, if I hired Ken, it's probably another year. You know, I'd like to find a coach that I can go to work with. You know, I, got, I hired Jeff Blau, I hired Mike Babcock. I worked with Mike for 10 years. Um, before Mike, I had Dave Lewis for two years, and I've, I've hired Jeff Blaschel, and this is year four. I like to build a relationship. You know, I build a relationship and go to work, and Again, it's going to be up and down. It's going to be up and down. It's never smooth sailing. And I, I need to find a coach that um, we're going to work with. We're going to, we're going to bunker in and we're going to go to work with one, one common goal. And I just think it was time. This is an opportunity for me to, to, to go through that process to find that coach. Yeah. Thanks. Jason at the back. Uh, two questions. Um, for Jason Greger, TSN 1216 Orders Nation. For uh, Bob and Daryl, um, Ken just talked about an opportunity and time for change. Um, there hasn't been a lot of change, really. Like Peter Shirelli came in, and the only addition he made in the management was uh, was Keith Gretzky. Uh, Daryl, you've watched this team. You've obviously invested a lot of money in it. Do you feel there needs to be you've changed a lot of players and coaches in that time? A few GMs. Do you need other change in the upper part in scouting and management of your team? Uh, let me uh, take that first, Daryl. Uh, there has been a lot more change than Keith Gretzky. Uh, when you look at uh, the the pro scouting side of it and to the amateur uh, side of that, uh, Peter Shirelli made changes over the first two years. His major, major um, person that he brought in was Keith Gretzky. But throughout the whole operations, uh, Peter made a lot of changes and uh, Ken's gonna go through the exact same process and uh, you know he'll set his timelines and set his process of how he'll do that and make the, we have some really good assets, some really good people uh, but that will be Ken to go through, have those discussions uh, with those people, and then form his own uh, hockey operations. And uh, Ken, for you, obviously you built a, a real winning tradition in Detroit. Culture is a term that some people don't necessarily like because it's, it simplifies things, but it's very deep in, in how you bring just an energy and, and a belief system to the organization. How long do you think it takes to do that? Because when you came into Detroit, prior to that, I think they lost nine years in a row, right? And you were just in the early years how do you build that foundation so it's strong and a winning culture, not just on the ice, but off of it? That is a great question. Um, you know, obviously, <clears throat> ultimately winning, winning is going to make everything good. Now, how do you, how do you, start, to, how do you start to win? It's about people. What's culture? To me, culture is people. Culture is the people that you bring in on the ice and off the ice. And... They care about the logo. They care about the logo. And one of the things that I tried to sell as the general manager as the Detroit Red Wings 
was, you know, the, you, you earn the jersey. Whether you're a young player, you got to earn the jersey. You just don't get to put the jersey on because you were a high draft pick or you got you, you got to earn the jersey. And you got to go to work every day and you got to respect that jersey and you got to play hard. And the Red Wings didn't, we didn't have a very good year this year, but I think we were involved like almost 51 goal games. We lost a lot of games close. The team played hard. Um, the young kids were starting to take over the team. And I think we were heading in the right direction. And guys like Nick Cronwell and some of those veteran players have been a real positive impact on those young players. They don't know it, but they're going to find out five, six years from now when they start to re reflect back on the people that had an impact on their career. So it's finding some veterans, it's having those veteran players. You have young players. You've got to challenge those young players. You've got to you give the young players an opportunity, but the, the coach has to make them accountable. There has to be an accountability um, in the locker room and, and on, on the front ice, front office. And I guess at the end of the day, What's a culture? You gotta work, it's a work ethic, it's a compete every day. The league is so hard to win, you gotta compete. Your scouts gotta compete. Your managers gotta compete. Your coaches have gotta compete. You're, you're competing with 31 other organizations that are the best in the world, and you gotta grind. You grind, you grind. And I guess that's who I am, and I love to play golf, and I love to grind. I like to get up and down. I don't wanna hit it on the green, I like to get up and down, you know what I mean? Get up and down from a bunker. I like it when life is tough. Life is tough. You got to grind. You got to dig in. So culture is about finding when, when life is tough. Right now, think times are tough. The, the, the team has made the playoffs once in 13 years, and Daryl and Bob have made a decision to bring me in. I've got to come in, and I've got to change the culture. And I believe they've given me complete authority. I've got to provide stability. I've got to find the right people. Some of them are in this organization. I, maybe I got to go outside and, find, and, and bring some people outside the organization. That's what I, the process that I got to go through here over the next sh period of time, and that's ongoing. So um, that's what my experience in Detroit. To, and then, and then, obviously, it's great players. Great players. You know, I got the pleasure to work with Iserman and Lidstrom and 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 uh, Zetterberg and Datsuk. They were great players. And they really cared. They really cared. And I saw that when Scotty Bowman came in, and how Steve Eiserman decided that, 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 that determined he was going to less points and block more shots and win more, more, win more draws. But young players don't know that. They, they, they want to come in and they want to do what they've, they've, they've always done. So there's a process with, with, with young players, and that's why you need veteran, veteran. I'd like to think that's what I'm going to bring here as a veteran manager. I'm going to hire a coach. That, that I believe is also going to is going to bring that find the right mix find the right mix of uh, of players to support the core, and we got to create some excitement. We got to get the fans to believe. We got to get the fans to believe that I'm the right guy, that I can put a plan in, a, a, a plan in place um, to get them excited. And that's what we did in Detroit. That's what Jim Devolano did in Detroit, in the uh, when the Illiches uh, hired him in 19. Uh, 83 and by the late 80s early 90s we had her we had her going and we had drafted good we had young players going and once you get it going once you get it going now you now you got her going now you got her going so there's lots of pieces here it's up to me to add to that to those pieces to try to figure out the right chemistry to figure out to, to, how to support those some of those key pieces that are here um, through the decisions that we make on players on the ice but also the decisions that I make in, 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 the, in the staff. Okay, we've got time for a couple more. We'll go up front to Bob and then last question. Ken, Bob Stauffer, Oilers Radio Network. I'll be the geek here and ask the question about analytics and for a lack of a better term, sports science. Just your thought on uh, maybe how the importance of those two areas have changed over the last several years and where you're at with that. I believe in analytics. I believe it's a tool. I believe it's a tool. I don't believe it makes your decisions. I think that you, uh, what we did in Detroit, um, I was always been analytics. Like, and I, I remember sitting in 19, I became manager in 1997 and 1998 and 1999 and saying, okay, how many goals are Dallas going to score this year? How many goals is Colorado going to score? How many, the, our, our peer group, how many goals is Dallas, I mean, Jersey going to score? And, and I looked and tried to create a, uh, figure out, do we have enough offense? And then, and then you got to be goals against. Now, th those are basic analytics. Well, the analytics today are way deeper than that. So analytics has always been, I'm a numbers guy. I'm a numbers guy. Um, and so analytics is something that 
Um, you know, we had somebody in Detroit, uh, we, we would play, you know, the Edmonton Oilers are coming into town and, and uh, Jeff Blaschel would talk to our analytics guy about, about numbers and he would give him numbers to, as, as Jeff went into the game to make decisions on matchups and line, you know, whatever he wanted to do. So certainly the head coach was talking to our analytics person and we're the same thing in the, uh, in the amateur draft and in, in the, 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 pro, the pro scouting, looking at statistics, but it's a guide, it's a guide. Certainly I need people in the field that I respect that are watching games and they've got instincts and they've got experience and you, 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 you put the two together and you eventually make, make a decision. And I wanna come back to Terry, and you're gonna make the odd bad decision. Like, I want you to know, I'm gonna make the odd bad decision. You, you can't make, if you're gonna make the, or you make no decisions. You make no decisions and you don't make any bad decisions. So gotta make way more good decisions than bad decisions. Um, but, but certainly analytics is a part, is a, it's, it's a piece of the process. Thank you. Fletcher. And Mr. Cates, uh, you'd spoken earlier about uh, how, how you weren't satisfied with how things have been going the past few years. Uh, and we've heard from a number of season ticket holders over the last little while, their displeasure as well, some of them talking about not renewing their season tickets. How, is, how has some of this displeasure affected the business side of things? And how, uh, how do you feel about uh, what you're hearing from some of the fans and how that plays into what's happening here today? Look, at our, our intention uh, from the outset and especially today relative to bringing Kenny into the organization is to build, as you've said, an elite team. Um, and uh, that takes the right people and the right plan. Um, and to Kenny's point, I, I've never suggested that um, we haven't made some uh, mistakes or wrong decisions, but the objective has always been the same. And that's why you see uh, the greatest arena in the world and one of the greatest developments in the world across the street. Um, you know, that's our commitment to this city uh, and to hockey in this marketplace. Um, and it's not a short-term commitment. It's a long-term commitment and um, relative to our discussions um, about Kenny and what he did in Detroit, I think um, the eliteness of the system and team and process that he developed for me is what I want to see. Um, you know, you saw what happened in the first round of the playoffs this year. If you get in, it's like another season. Anything can happen. And, you know, our objective has to be to be competitive uh, year in and year out, and that's what builds an elite team. And I can tell you with the core that we have uh, in the playoffs, these young guys, I just have a sense that uh, um, uh, we, we have the abilities to take it to another level. And uh, th that's what's exciting to me, is to build uh, longevity and a franchise that fans can be proud of year after year. And that's exactly what Kenny did in Detroit. And relative to um, general managers who have done that in any sport, it's not just hockey. Ken Holland's on the top 10 list of general managers of every sport. Okay, so it's a unique individual that has this skill set and vision um, to create a culture, in your words, that can uh, lead and develop this uh, franchise into an elite team. That's uh, been Bob's objective from when we started to talk in the Olympic, after the Olympic days, and, and it's, uh, we, we are very like-minded in that regard. Um, and, and I think we're fortunate that, as Kenny said, we have the core uh, with maybe the ability to do some things where we can be competitive very quickly. 
but you know, make no mistake, our objective is to build the Oilers into one of the elite teams in the league who every year uh, we're there. And if we get in, watch out. Thanks, Daryl. Final question to the gentleman at the back. Hi, um, uh, Ken. Uh, congratulations. Welcome to Edmonton. Gene Prince Bay with Sportsnet. Uh, had you envisioned that you would always kind of start and finish with the Red Wings and when you kind of felt uh, that that pull, you mentioned how difficult it was maybe to leave. And Bob, when you went after Ken, what was sort of your game plan on, on selling the Oilers in Edmonton to him so you'd be here sitting today? Your question was, did I envision myself being at Red Wing forever? Yeah, I did. Um, and I think, you know, um, you know, one of the things that I've asked my people, my the, the players through the years, is to sacrifice. Go to the go to the minors, um, spend an extra time in the minors to take a little bit less money. You got to take a little bit less. About sacrifice. It's about sacrifice. If you're going to win, everyone's got to sacrifice a little bit. And my time had come when Steve Eiserman stepped down in Tampa Bay. I realized it was my time to make that sacrifice. And I worked with Chris Illich, and ultimately. I'm thrilled that the last move that I made as the general manager of the Detroit Red Wings was to step aside and hand the keys to Steve Eiserman. I got a great relationship with Steve. Um, we're friends, we worked together. I, we had a player-manager relationship, and then he, he, after he retired, he, he worked in, my, in the front office with us for four years and went to Tampa Bay. And the Illich has offered me, like I said, a, 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 a very, very incredible offer to remain with the organization as the senior vice president. And I would say to you that my thinking at that point in time was that I was going to be a Red Wing for life and work with Steve and support him. And like I said, when I went over to the world's, un, world under 18s, I was only a week in, I was already getting itchy. And, and then Bob called and, you know, when I think about the Edmonton orders, and again, we've got the players here, this franchise, the fan base, uh, I just think there's an opportunity here um, for me to try to make a real positive impact on this franchise. Um, after going through the process, all the conversations with Bob and with Daryl, them giving me full authority, um, that was important. I just, I, I, there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's things that I believe in and they've given me that authority to believe in those things. Now I've got to make them happen. Now it falls on me. I've got to, I've got to, I have the responsibility to build that culture, to find ways to make the team a little bit better for the 1920 season, get into the playoffs and keep growing and keep building and keep growing and adding pieces and building. That's what we did in Detroit. Um, and again, there's, there's, there's huge pillars, foundation uh, 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 in that locker room. So there's a great start. Um, and I've got to continue to, uh, to build, to grow, and uh, that, 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 that team. So yes, the answer is yes. I thought, I thought that when Steve went, the day that Steve was there, I thought I would be there for life, but I also wasn't sure if I was going to get restless. And I told that to Chris Illich. I said, if down the road I get restless, um, and I got restless sooner than I thought. <laughs> Just to add to that, Gene, uh, yes, I thought he was going to be a Detroit Red Wing forever, but I thought there might be a chance. And when I called Ken uh, the first time, it was a short uh, discussion. The next time was very lengthy. And uh, what you've asked today, think of the questions you've asked today of Ken. That's what I got when I started to interview him. Passion clear direction, how we wanted to move this organization forward, and that's what got myself really excited, why we needed Ken Holland in Edmonton. And we're able to deliver uh, Ken to Daryl and to our fans. Thank you.